Hello, good to watching this video. Today is May 5, 2024. May 5 in the Netherlands is Liberation Day. So the World War II came to an end in 1945. So long time ago, but every year again, May 5th Liberation Day. And because it's May 5, I give you five theory questions. And also explanation about stopping distance, following distance, and so on. The first question, what is the correct order of giving way? And then number one, two, and three must go to the right position. Well, we see a white car turning left and a blue moped turning right. And pedestrians walking straight on the same road as the white car and the blue moped. And rule number two of the priority rules, we have only three rules. Rule number two says traffic goes straight ahead on the same road, goes before turning drivers. So pedestrians are number one. Rule number one, on a junction without shark teeth, without stop signs, without traffic lights, without anything, yeah, the first rule is you have to give way to drivers from the right. There are no drivers from the right in this situation. The second rule is straight ahead on the same road. And the third rule is the short turn goes before the long turn. So drivers turning to the right goes before drivers turning to the left on the same road. So moped is number two. And I think you already know by yourself who is number three. Well done, the white card is number three. Question number two. Should you give way to the person in the wheelchair? Yes or no? Well, above his head you see the sign of pedestrian crossing, zebra crossing, and you have to let go. Pedestrians and also persons in wheelchairs. So the right answer is... Yes, of course, you have to let the person in the wheelchair go. And if there is no zebra crossing, you must give way to pedestrians with crutches, so maybe with a broken leg or something, the elderly people walking with a walker, or people carrying a white cane with red rings. And this white cane indicates that the pedestrian is blind or cannot see well. It's just like this, pedestrians have a foldable zebra crossing with them and can place it anywhere on the road, wherever they want. And remember, only those three kinds of pedestrians you have to let go. Not people in a wheelchair. That's only if they want to cross on a zebra crossing. Question number three. You stop here to let a passenger get into the car. Is that allowed? Yes or no? Well, we see this blue sign here, it indicates a RF, a home zone, but CBR doesn't translate the word home zone, they use the word RF. And in an RF the speed limit is 15 km per hour, I told you yesterday. And in an RF pedestrians may walk on the carriage way, they don't have to walk on the sidewalk. And if you want to park, post in a parking place with a white letter P painted on the road. But if you want to stop in an air to let a passenger get into the car, that is allowed. So right answer is yes, that's allowed. And you may also stop in an air to load and unload goods. Question number four. You are now continuing the drive at 100 km per hour. Is that allowed? Well, looking at the traffic sign, we see a speed limit of 70, but still the answer is yes, you are allowed. Because here it says, by not wegdek. And by not wegdek means if the road surface is wet. It's not wet, it's dry. And if it's dry, then the 70 does not apply. So you can continue to drive it 100 km per hour. And if the road is wet, then it's also a slippery curve. Question number five. What is the braking distance? Is it answer A, the distance a vehicle travels from the moment you brake? Or is it answer B, the distance a vehicle travels before braking? 
or is it NCC, the distance a vehicle travels from the moment you brake until you come to a stop? Well, the right answer is answer A. The braking distance is the distance a vehicle travels from the moment you brake. And if you do the theory test, you have a lot of terms like following distance, braking distance, stop distance, and so on and so on. And the distance after which you stand still is sometimes shorter and sometimes longer than other times. This has to do with some of the following causes. The speed at which the vehicle is driven. The higher your speed, the longer your stopping distance. I think that's normal. Yeah? And if you double the speed, the braking distance increases quadratically. So it becomes four times longer. For example, if the braking distance at 50 km per hour is 15 meters, then if you drive 100 km per hour, the braking distance is not 30 meters, but 60 meters. Also important, what type of road service? On an asphalt road, your braking distance will be shorter than on a road surface consisting of bricks. And what condition is the road surface in? Is it dry? Is it wet? Is it covered with sand, with mud, with snow? Yeah, your stopping distance will differ each and every time. And what condition is your vehicle in? In particular, the condition of the tires, the brakes, the suspension. And how hard do you brake? Sometimes you brake hard, sometimes you don't brake so hard. So each and every time, braking distance is different. And drive you alone in the car or have you passengers and luggage? If you drive alone, the braking distance is shorter than if you carry many passengers and luggage. Yeah, that's what the CBR says. Huh? I don't know if it's true because I always stand still. If I have to stop for a red light, I stand just before the, the line on the road, yeah, if I drive alone or with three, four passengers in the car. But CBR says, if you have passengers or luggage, the braking distance is longer. And also important is your response time, yeah, that it takes to actually brake after you have seen something. When you're well rested, your reaction time is shorter than when you are tired or under the influence of alcohol, drugs or medication. Yeah, and the average response time is approximately one second. Okay, the following distance. The following distance you have to keep from another car is two seconds. So if you drive in this car, it's a Renault 5, yeah, you must keep two seconds dip, uh, distance from the car in front of you. But if you drive on a motorway, how can you know how many meters that is? Well, it's not so difficult as you think it is. Because one line, one stripe is 3 meters. And the open space is 9 meters. So from one beginning of one stripe till the next stripe is 12 meters. And if you drive, for example, 100, your following distance must be 55 meters. So 55 meters, let's count the stripes. This is 12, 24, 36, 48, 60. So about five lines between you and the next car. Well, you see, between the gray car over here and the black car, one stripe. So it's about 12 or 50 meters, way too short following distance and from the black car to the red car two stripes 24 meters that's how you if you must do the driving test at the cpr can see if your following distance is enough and remember if you don't have enough following distance on the motorway you never pass the driving test okay following distance how do you calculate the following distance? Um, it's not so difficult. You divide the speed by 2 and at 10% of this result. For example, if you drive 100 km per hour, divided by 2 makes 50 meters. 
and 10% of 50 is 5 meters, so 50 plus 5 is approximately 55 meters of following distance. Then I have this soccer field, and a soccer field is about 100 meters. And here are you see the different speeds and how many following distance you must have. So 30 divided by 2, 15. 10% of 15, 1.5, so your following distance 16.5, 50, 60, and so on, and so on. And if you drive on the motorway, then you can see here how many stripes distance you must have approximately. Next thing, you, mm, you must know at the CBR, is not how many kilometers per hour you drive, but how many meters per second. And the following distance is two seconds. And if you want to know your following distance, you divide the speed by two. And if you want to know the, the meters per second, you divide the speed by four. And again, 10% of this result you add at this. For example, if you drive 80 kilometers per hour, divided by four is 20. Plus 10% of 20 is 2, 20 plus 2 is about 22 meters per second. And we go back to the soccer field. So if you drive 30, you drive 8 meters per second. And if you drive 130, you drive 36 meters per second. And if you want to know the braking distance, then you must divide the driven speed by 10. For example, 80 km per hour divided by 10 is 8. Then multiply this result by itself. So 8 by 8 is 64. And then you divide this by 2. 64 divided by 2, 30, 32. So the braking distance at 80 km per hour is about 32 meters. Then we go to the soccer field and we see the braking distance of the different speeds. So if you drive 130, your braking distance, not your stopping distance, but your braking distance is 85 meters. So you need about one soccer field to stand still if you drive 130. And what remains is the stopping distance. And to calculate the stopping distance, you add the distance you cover in one second, that's the speed divided by 4 plus 10%, to the braking distance. So if you drive 80, this is 22 meters yeah, in one second. 80 divided by 4, 20 plus 10%, 22 plus 32, the braking distance is Together, 55 meters, you need to stand still completely. And we go back to the soccer field. And which speed so we take? Let's say we you drive 100. If you drive 100, you need one second to react. This 100 divided by 4, 25, 10%, 27.5. Okay, we make it 28. Your Stopping distance 50, so after 78 meters you come to a stop if you drive 100. And if you drive 30, then you see your time to react is more than the braking distance. You see three white cars here. And the first car is he noticed the danger, the hazard that he must stop. Then the first thing is the reaction time. It's one second. So here the car starts braking and at the end here he stands still. And if the speed increases two times, the braking distance increases four times. Remember it well. And this was everything for today. So almost 15 minutes for five questions okay. you see it's not easy to learn the theory in the netherlands and if you want to learn all the theory in the netherlands go to theorycourse.com you read the name here 
and there you can order your video course to pass the test at the CBR in one go. Thank you for watching. Make an other video soon. Um, yeah, hope to see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you. Gracias. Luego.